Sometimes when working on your projects, you want to make an object either rotate constantly or move in a steady direction. Instead of having to write a script for it every time, I'm going to show you a component you can use that'll take care of that for you. If you're new to the channel, please click like and subscribe and you'll be notified of any future videos coming soon. The component is called Constant Force and it does exactly what the name says. It just constantly applies a force that you tell it to an object. To demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to create a cube and reset its transform. And now to make it easy that we can actually see the forward direction of the cube, I'm going to create a sphere and just scale it down a little bit and drag it to the front of the cube so it makes a bit of a bubble on the front. And you just want to make sure you're on global, not local up at the top here, just so we know the, the global Z direction as well, so we can see it here. So right now, our local Z and the global Z are both facing the same direction. Now on the cube, I'm just going to go to add component and add one called constant force. And you'll notice there is also a constant force 2D. So if you're working in 2D, you have an option there as well. It's going to automatically add the rigid body that it needs to the object. So if it's not there, you don't have to worry about it. So now on the component, we have settings here where we can change the, the force values for either the force relative force, which is force in the local space, and I'll demonstrate that right away, and then torque, which is rotation, and relative torque, which is the local rotation. So if we look at our cube now, we see this blue arrow for the z-axis, showing that it's facing this direction here. Now I'm just going to rotate our cube a bit here, and then if we select it, so in global mode, we see the z-axis is facing this direction. And now if we click on global to change it to local, we see it's facing in a different direction. So the two aren't the same anymore. So now if you tell the cube to move forward in the local direction, it's going to move in this direction here. And if we click the local button now to go back to global, global is going to move in this direction. And that's the difference between the two forces. So let's try this in game. So let's run the game. And that camera view is actually hard to tell the difference. So I'm just going to rotate it more on the other direction. And now we can see it. And we forgot to turn off gravity, so let's just go disable gravity on the rigid body. Run the game again. And now if we start changing the force, so let's go with the Z, which is the forward. If we start to add some force, notice that it's moving in this direction here. I'm just going to stop it and start again. And this time let's add some relative force and it's moving on the local scale. But it looks very similar here because of the rotations. They're pretty close together. So I'm actually just going to rotate this object a lot more so it's, it's a lot more obvious to you. Let's run the game again now and start adding some world space Z. And now it's a lot more obvious. The cube's not moving in the direction that the sphere is. So this is moving in the world position. And now if we try the same thing again, but using the relative force Z, notice it's moving in the direction of the sphere, which is the local forward direction. And then if you add a negative number, it's going to go backwards. And now torque works the exact same way, but with rotations. So if we run it and we add some rotation on the Z of the torque value, this is moving in world. So you can see the object's kind of wobbling as it spins because it's not actually spinning on one of its local axis. So let's try that again now using relative torque, and you can see it spins directly. And now from the way it's spinning, you could already see this could be useful for something like a fan blade spinning or uh, any object that you just want constantly rotating. I'm just going to make another sphere and show you how quickly you could make a little primitive uh, ceiling fan or you know wind turbine or something with this approach here. So I'm just going to scale them up to the right size and then duplicate this one and rotate it. So now in a matter of a minute or so, we've made a simple fan with no scripting or anything at all. And then if you did want to get more advanced with it, you can access this component from your script. So you could do things like change the speed or the direction via code as the game's running. And then you don't have to worry about actually doing any kind of scripting with the rigid body itself. So this is very handy for a lot of simple things like this. Hope it helps you out and thanks for watching.